Hey! Oh, good. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. It's episode 54 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. 54. Are you? You're not 54. I am. You are 54. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten to my age yet. No, no. We've got at least uh, 18 episodes to go, right? Something like that. Come on. Wait. (laughs) The lighting that makes me look. (laughs) Oh. Hey, so by the way, this last Sunday or Saturday was my anniversary. My wife and I have been married Uh, for a while. 54 years. Close. 26. Wow. So not close, really, but a long time. God bless you. And uh, so one of my jokes is, uh, I will say, um, my wife and I have been married 25 years, or she likes to say 26. I'm never sure. <laughs> Great. And that's really, and I think thought of that as a joke. And then I realized for this anniversary, no, that's not a joke. Because I had convinced myself we'd been married 31 years. Wow. That's and, much longer. Yeah. And it's because I was conflating how long we've been together with how long we've been married, which is not a bad thing, mistake to make. Except yeah. that she always tells me which is which. <laughs> <laughs> So that meant that in my mind, I thought, well, we've been married 31. Well, we've been together 26, which too wouldn't make sense. It's been done. I'm sure it has. Not ideal. Yeah. So we arranged marriage. We didn't meet for five years. It would be <laughs> how it would have had to happen. Oh, yeah. But Lord, we've been married a long damn time. That's uh, the like, truth. Yeah. That longer than anyone I know. Yeah, and uh, sure. Yeah, it's man, and every now and then we meet a couple that's been together a little longer. And I here's what we've met that does freak me out is when I meet somebody who's been married longer and they're younger. Oh yeah, are they I don't, always like Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're either always Christian or definitely they're from like. Arkansas or Ohio or someplace like that. Pick early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they were somebody who they did a version of the right thing. So what probably happened cuz a lot of times the lady is also a grandma. <laughs> You're right. That's fun. Yeah. 37-year-old grandma. You're like, "Hey, have you noticed your grandma still has pretty sweet titties?" <laughs> <laughs> we usually aren't that crass on this show by the way we're not we're usually not like that i never am yeah i am sometimes <laughs> but it's a weird thing and i'm like you know my i'm really proud of my son he just graduated what he just graduated yeah from college or something it's very weird to exist outside of that ecosystem where i don't have kids at all Sure. And I often think, uh, you know, oh, if I had kids, how old would they be now? And I'm just starting to realize, oh, I'd have grandkids. Yeah. Sure. Even if I had kids at a reasonable age. Yeah. Like 40, <laughs> there's a good chance they'd have grandkids. Yep. A friend or of mine I scared them off the whole idea of reproducing. A friend of mine had this joke, and I know he wouldn't mind because he doesn't do this joke in stand up anymore. And his joke was, I was thinking about it, that if I had kids when I was a teenager, they'd already be out of the house because for sure they'd be dead. (laughs) Isn't that great? I had, uh, my joke was always, um, I never wanted kids. I think I get that from my parents. (laughs) That's a great joke. (laughs) Oh. Boy, now so we talked about you doing stand up. That could be your second joke. Remember our bit where you were going to do just one joke and go, "Good night, everybody." Good night, everybody. I yeah, still, man. I still think that's such a funny idea. For you to be the feature or whatever. You do the one joke and you're like, "Goodbye." I love the idea of like whoever's running the night has to like turn around. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, that would be the best. That'd be so funny. Yeah, you could talk somebody into letting you do that. You could probably. Oh, for sure. You could talk Mulaney. You know him well enough. Go, let me do this. And he would find that funny. I'm going to do a drop in. 
my intro really long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many credits. You make so many credits. You're still mentioning Comedy Corner from college. <laughs> Four cool. years of Comedy Corner. Uh, here, SPs three times. Here's a funny uh, review we got on a recent episode. Oh, and uh, it was a review comment. Comment oh. review is a strong word, uh, <laughs> and it was about one of our uh, episodes where I had COVID. Ah, and it was. Man, Jim, you look like shit in this episode. That was a review. <laughs> nice. With the acknowledgement that you had COVID? or I don't think they knew at the time that I had COVID. Oh. So probably the review was more like, hey, next time you have COVID, just don't, just don't do a show that week. Yeah, you can take the week off for COVID. Yeah. <laughs> um, nope. it's, it's so much better than if you'd gotten the same comment on a week you didn't have COVID. Yeah. Or even worse, like the COVID week. Wow, you look great. You look better. Yeah. What, you do? what are you doing with your hair? <laughs> yeah, you look like Martin Mull. Yeah. <laughs> with sweet titties. Wait. With sweet titties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a gun. Yeah. And they weren't wrong. I've looked at those episodes. The best part of those episodes, too, is just my labored breathing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those are good episodes for the labored breathing. Always that always puts a listener at ease. Yeah, I have a few videos of me doing comedy and their comedy, like when my allergies are acting up and I, like, how are you guys doing out there? <laughs> like, All right. <laughs> Isn't it weird when you like are a fan of a sitcom like Seinfeld, let's say, and you, uh, watch them obsessively in syndication and then like you watch one and you're like oh Seinfeld had a cold this week I can you can hear that he has a cold yes this is a little different because you watch too many Seinfelds you know what show you know, does that I'm going yeah. to work yeah the show that does that for me is friends because I enjoyed friends fine and there are some later season episodes with Matthew Perry yeah. where you're like, I believe he's just coming out of rehab in these episodes. Yeah. And he because and his his face is very, very thin. And I'm glad he survived. But you get the impression that those are the these are when they wheel them out because <laughs> yeah. that poor fella went through it oh yes and uh and got out the other side of millionaire so good job <laughs> so but <laughs> lord that's a that is the you know matthew perry is the perfect example if somebody doesn't believe that money can't buy happiness you go well let me give you an example let me introduce you to someone yeah <laughs> Let me give you, give you an example of someone who could not acquire happiness at a happiness store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if those exist still. I thought was they were in the malls. You remember that when the happiness store was there? All online now. Yeah. It's all <laughs> no brick and mortar happiness. Yeah. I remember I, I uh, ordered happiness online and I got it and I was pretty happy, I will say. But then they stole my credit card information and I was bummed. Oh, it ruined everything I got from the happiness store. <laughs> so you gave me homework. Well, I'll say we gave me homework. It wasn't just you, because last time we did, and so it goes. And Alex said the funniest thing to me that just, ah, just is such a funny idea is that this should, because we were talking about this should be an album of songs and the title of the album is songs to sing at someone while they're packing <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i oh, like the phrase sing at someone so much yeah i there are certain songs where you're like oh this is not to anyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i like the idea because i think we're all familiar with having been talked at Sure. I think I've talked at a few people not meaning to. 
Absolutely, we all have. Sometimes meaning to. (laughs) (laughs) Not meaning to is always when I'm like, I've got an agenda for what I want to tell you. Hey, you know what I just learned about evolution? (laughs) (laughs) And then there's I'm mad at my wife and I talk at her. (laughs) And she does that with me. Just so you know, I get talked out a lot. For sure. Here's the thing I said to my wife the other day. I understand you're upset, but I just started eating dinner. (laughs) Wow. And she said, and I think this is why the marriage has lasted so long. Fuck your dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I guess the reason it's lasted so long is because I find that kind of stuff funny. (laughs) Yeah, that's probably. (laughs) That would ruin my month. That's definitely a breaking point for somebody. And for me, that's like, oh, that's great. Fuck your dinner. <laughs> it's a great phrase. It's very yep. funny phrase, but to be in the middle of it, I don't know if I could. Now, can I tell you what I did? You finished your dinner? Finished my goddamn dinner. That's right. Right. I was not good enough. We're kind of we're eating at her. Yep. <laughs> See, for the podcast, nobody's going to be able to see what you're doing right now, but it is hilarious. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was so funny because we'd gotten along all day. She just suddenly had something she was upset about. I'm like, come on. Come on. (laughs) Why now? (laughs) Yeah. And the reason why now, for real, if for performers out there, is because she has not sung in front of people in a while. On our anniversary, she sang in front of people because we went to this place, uh, Feinstein's in San Francisco, and they had an open mic. And I got to tell you, I love when my wife sings at an open mic because people's expectations are so ridiculously low. Yeah. And their expectations are solely that there will be alcohol. That was the entire expectation of the night, really. Right. And then my wife will get up there and be amazing. Yeah. And the tenor of the room changes. This is how good she was. There was a professional uh, professional singer, two singers after my wife. And she said, I was going to do something new, but I can't do that. I'm doing something I know. (laughs) (laughs) And then her and my wife bonded afterwards and it was delightful. And uh, oh, right. and guess who's been in a good mood ever fucking since? Oh, look at that! Hmm. From like a successful performance. That's right. So the idea was songs to sing at someone while they're packing is so we're gonna put this album out and it's like <laughs> and it's gonna be on the same label that puts out. Uh, now that's what I call the '90s. It's gonna be on that label, you know. Right. And so this is what you call disco, one of those albums, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, it, so it, so we're curating it. We're not recording new songs. This is a curated album. Um, so I, I got the last song is a is a you could have probably picked, but it's the perfect song. But the first song is what did you think? Sure, I yep. won't say at this moment. Billy Vera. Uh, yeah, the- that's right. <laughs> And the beaters. There's only me, Bob Dugan. Oh, I don't know it. A uh, little up tempo, but still kind of shitty. Go your own way, Fleetwood Mac. Yep. Uh, Amy Winehouse, love is a losing game. Mm. Yeah. And then I was like, we need a bop, but that's still from someone kind of pissed off. Irreplaceable by Beyonce. Ooh, yeah. I got to be honest, we're going to have to work on getting the rights for this on this album, but it belongs on this oh, album. That's so many phone calls. Uh, we're going back. I hope you're happy, Elvis Costello. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And then I don't know if you've heard this, but are you a Lily Allen fan? I have liked what I've heard, but I have not chased down more. I am a fan. I like Lily Allen a lot because, first of all, she writes all her own stuff. Second of all, she's mad. (laughs) Great. 
<laughs> Lily Allen is angry all the time. Uh, and she's got this song called Smile. Oh, great. And it's more or less when I think about you suffering, I smile. Is more or less what the song <laughs> is, Lily Allen. And now I'm going to sneak this one on here. And again, the rights are going to be tricky. So this isn't for sure going to be on the album. I really want this to be on the album. And honestly, you'll have to have Sue work on this because she's our producer. And I don't know. So I'm just pitching it for no one, the Beatles. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get a Beatles song in. Yeah. And it belongs on there. There's a bitter, mean little song. And then I, it's a cliche, but I feel like we just end the album with Love Stinks. Yeah. Wait, and that's a song. Jay he, huh? A Jay Giles band? Yeah, it's either Jay Giles or the Kinks. And I didn't look. I, thought, I think it's Jay Giles. Yeah. And that's definitely a song you sing at someone for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing pleasant about that song. It's so great. It's weird how much fun that song is for being how shitty it is now here's a consideration from a prudo producerial standpoint sure like say the word um the runtime for this album sort of has to match how long it takes to pack a suitcase oh <laughs> if, if people are going to use it practically should we do we maybe even do a real couple real Real world experiments where we'll set up an apartment. Oh yeah, and we'll get we'll hire somebody to pack. Uh huh. And two Not pack. Professional. Yeah, no, 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 no. And we'll set up two apartments. We'll set up an apartment for the idea. This is a couple that's been living together for a year and a half. They moved. They're not married. They moved in, so they have that amount of stuff. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then not, not crazy. Not harder. right. And then we set up a place for a couple that's been married 10 years. Okay. And that packing job. All right. So we may have like a four disc set. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just pick how many discs you need. Yeah. Get out of there. I, uh, I won't. I have, you know, I've had many friends who got divorced. You know, I believe you're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I have many friends and I have some, some of my friends that when I think about their divorce, I have a, like one of my friends has this, my favorite divorce. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the way he left where he was just kind of just funny how quick he left when the door was opened by the person, the person said, you know, maybe we need to take a break from each other. And he moved out that weekend, and that's not what she meant. <laughs> it's funny to me. Wow. It's like a, a cat when you leave the door open for a second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny. Just <laughs> It's funny, too, because at the time, and this is how broken I am or was. I think I'm better than I used to be. I was so sad that he was getting a divorce. Because the idea of divorce. And years later, I'm like, he was exactly right. Yeah, man. He was right. There was time for them to move on. It's almost always the case that uh, by the time the divorce happens, it's good news. Yeah. For both people involved. Yeah. Because it takes a lot to get to that point. But by proxy... I was like, no, you got to stick it out. You guys, <laughs> you guys haven't suffered enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can suffer right through to the other side and you can yeah. stay married. You got to have kids first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, You're if you leave. Impacting your, each other. If you leave now, all there is is stuff. Yeah. My uh, a friend of mine, Greg Marks. Greg Marks, a very talented singer who. Also was the voice of Ross for many years. <laughs> Wait, what? He was the voice of Ross, dressed for less for a oh, long yeah. time. Because you had mentioned friends earlier. And I was like, wait a minute. Oh, Ross. Yeah, yeah. No, my friend, 
was the voice of Ross Dress for Less for many years, but he also is a very talented cabaret singer. And um, he uh, had this breakup song he used to sing, I think it's by Jason Robert Brown, a very cabaret song. And it's about all the stuff in a breakup that you keep the couch, blah, blah, blah. And then you keep the friends and all this stuff. And it's certain parts of the song are a little cliche. But there's a part of the song that always would make me cry because uh, it would be like, you keep these friends. They were never my friends and all this stuff. And then at one point, the lyric just kind of slows down and he go, and it goes, the dog. <laughs> and they have a dog. And then he goes, maybe. And then the lyric is, maybe I'll visit sometimes. Well, yeah. And then, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to because that sucks and it's kind of implied in the song and you it's also as a dog owner you're like oh that stinks because then you're gonna hear about the day that your dog passed on yeah but you're not gonna be there for the day when your dog passed on right what a heartbreaking son of a gun that is a kind of a thing i'm uh waiting on oh i'm sorry not like actively yeah so there's a dog out there yeah yeah <laughs> is that a version of the joke i don't i don't have any dogs that i know of is that a version <laughs> i think that is i think it is yeah i don't have any grandkids well yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty goddamn funny all right that goes in not the act no it doesn't i got better stuff that's how good i am that's so much stuff I got the stuff. Uh, so you picked, this is the song you picked. This is why we're here. <laughs> As you picked a song called Somewhere Along the Line. Yeah. And I said this before we recorded. This is a little behind the scenes. I said, uh, it might as well be Piano Man, the way it sounds. It sounds an awful lot like Piano Man. It's uh, similarly moody and uh, self-involved. And it's on that album. And it's on that album. Um, not in a bad way. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that was his sound at the time. Yeah. I think it's probably more authentically his sound than the, you, you know, whatever followed. Because once Piano Man was successful, then a lot of people had things to say to him about yep. how he should proceed. Yeah. So this is probably like the, and it's weird that it's a little country fried, mm -hmm. this whole sound. And there's like banjo on that album. Yeah. And there's a Jews harp. Can yeah. you still call them that? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Mouth harp. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know where that comes from. Not Long Island. No. Um, it probably him copying artists he liked. Yeah. Absolutely. A, a sound he liked. Again, the thing that we've said about Billy Joel many, many times is he's so there's musicians of the era mm -hmm. and Billy Joel is just Billy Joel. He's not particularly like anybody, even though absolutely he apes everybody. Yeah. But there's something very unique about this weird, pudgy fingered genius yeah. Classically trained, but yeah, definitely a Long Island bonehead. Yep. It's a and, weird platter. Yeah, and unapologetically himself, which is great quality. Um, all the things that you know you can criticize plenty because they're plenty to criticize, but he's still just a uniquely he's not, hey, we found another this guy. Right. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a pre-existing condition. Yeah, even like the comparisons to Elton John are just because they both had pianos. Yeah, and they're short, round guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're entirely different genres, really. I will say, by the way, Elton John has beat Billy Joel as far as fatness goes. Oh, yeah. Lord, that guy got fat. <laughs> he got real fat. And Billy Joel pulled back. Yeah, Billy Joel's looking really good right now. Yeah. 
that's pretty awesome. That's that's a stroke we didn't hear about or a heart attack we didn't hear about or caught it just in time we didn't hear about. Yeah, more likely like an angiogram we didn't hear about. Yeah, a bypass we didn't hear about. <laughs> so funny too, by the way, just a little side note before you get into the lyric, how great it is now if you need a triple bypass because it exists. <laughs> Amen. Speaking as someone who was fearing <laughs> that yeah. been pretty recently. I I am alive because that surgery was not available. That's why I'm alive. My huh. my mother's first husband uh bit the dust pretty early and but a few you know 10 years later they would have been able to know what was wrong and fix it. Wow. And uh, then there's no gym, but also uh my siblings would have got their original father which would have been nice too not for me <laughs> sure not great for you but you wouldn't know that yeah hey do you ever have this weird thought i've had this weird thought and then listen we're never going to talk about the song we're not going to <laughs> i've had this thought like what if my mom met a different dude and somehow right. the exact same egg got fertilized exact same egg yeah and then my dad met a different lady exact same sperm made it to a different egg and then those people may, met right where am i yeah where yeah, a, yeah. Why am I inside this guy looking out yep goes to a different guy yeah or lady or dog a lady or dog yeah what am huh? i doing in here yeah i do feel i do have that feeling of driving a lot where i re i look around and i go i'm just in here driving this dumb thing yeah. I wish I had a better car. <laughs> <laughs> Can I trade it in? Can I trade it in for a taller basketball playing version of this? <laughs> I really would have liked that. That's it. We're both going to die 10 years before they figure that out. Yeah. 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 yeah because they're going to discover it in, uh, in 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's very sad that they died in that plane crash to debut their podcast. <laughs> they were going to that stupid pod fest, idiots. <laughs> At the top of a mountain somewhere. <laughs> uh, well, what was cool is a couple of the people who were actually at the festival ended up doing a podcast about us. <laughs> that was nice. And we lived on that way. Yeah. So it's from somewhere along the line is from the album <laughs> Piano Man. 38 we, minutes in. Yep. That's that's always our mark. Well, it's pretty close, actually. Let's just see how far we can push this, baby. <laughs> November 9th, 1973 was when it was released from the album Piano Man. I'll start out. Well, it's a rainy Nathan. Neat. <laughs> that's, you, you know, know what? It, over from, start this podcast from the beginning. Can I tell you, by the way, why I got tripped up on that? Because you saw that it started with well. <laughs> it's because I see a French word and I'm like, all right, try to say that right. <laughs> and the nice thing is there's a hint as to how you're supposed to say it in the following line. Uh -huh. Because it's well, and yeah, Alex's favorite. It's a rainy night in Paris and I'm sitting by the same, correct? Correct. And you ha it has to be that because it's a pleasure to be soaking in the European rain. There's your hint, right? The rain. The hint. It's a uh, retroactive hint. Yeah, because it's got to rhyme. Because I used to say sign because I was sure that it <laughs> couldn't be sane. But then it, it, I'm sitting by the sign. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be soaking in the European rhyme. It's no good. Work. It doesn't rhyme. Um, so already we've learned something. <laughs> uh, by the way, so this is great. It's a rainy night in Paris, and I'm sitting by the Seine. It's a pleasure to be soaking in the European rain. Now my belly's full of fancy food and wine. I like that a lot because he's making it clear I'm an American idiot enjoying france and he's intentionally doing that it's not that's great yeah 
Um, that's the only, yeah, fancy food is a very funny, <laughs> very funny blue collar way to describe. Yeah. Um, uh, fancy food. Yep. It's fantastic, that line. And it's true. It's that's who he is in France for sure. And he's definitely a guy who's like focused on his belly and what's going on there. Yep. Now my belly's. And I like the fancy food and wine because probably that just means. <laughs> right. uh, it's like chicken with sauce. Yeah. <laughs> and they had fancy bread. Right. And the only reason it's fancy is because it's like that. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. pretty fancy. It's like, you didn't have to take your tray over to the trash can and slide it all off. <laughs> yep. On top. So I, I like that just right away. I like that we're immediately, we've got a, a clear cut vision of where you are and who you are. Yeah. That's very economical. Yep. I think uh, <laughs> I'm, we're going to pay attention to this in the future, but I feel like when he starts with well, he's about to like give you a, a real quick summary of something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> yep. I'm wet and full. By the way, when you get a chance, look at Billy Joel Piano Man, the album cover. For sure, before they shot it, they were like, all right, take this visine because you got your eyes have to look really, really nice. Because they do, they look really, really nice. Really great. I don't think they've ever looked that good before or since. No. no. But that's perfect. Also, he, he looks a little feminine on that cover, not in a bad way, but I don't think he ever let that happen again. Yeah, I think it was the style at the time. Yeah. Um, it's very queen. It's very queen. It's very, yeah, there's a Hall & Oates album from the same era where they have like blush on. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think he also looks a little bit like a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a lady ghost. A lady ghost. Yeah, he's got really, his lips are really plump. <laughs> Just kind of funny. <laughs> now my belly's full of fancy food and wine. Oh, but in the morning there'll be hell to pay. Somewhere along the line. Awesome. I overindulged. Yep. It was fun. I had fun. But. It, <laughs> but God damn it. Yeah. Um, it's very funny to me that he set sort of a perfect scene. I'm in Paris. It's raining by the sand. I had a nice chicken with sauce. Yeah. And the fifth line. It's like, oh, it's Billy Joel. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah Go to suck in the morning. Yep. And it's definitely, I, so there's a, it's, it's Italian, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. There's an Italian wine called Amarone. Oh, Have yeah. you ever had an Amarone? Sure. It is my favorite wine, period. Lovely. Yeah. I like Italian wine a lot. And if, I'm at a thing where they have a bottle of Amarone and we're drinking Amarone. It's such a good night. If I'm at a thing where they have a couple bottles, I'm going to keep drinking. I just am. Yeah. Because that was the night we were and it's and fucking Brett. Listen, <laughs> I, he was young then, so he could do it a little bit. It gets worse and worse as you get older. If you're okay. having if you're having pasta and bread which, listen, you, well, I'm not good at that anymore. <laughs> and then there's wine. Oh, Lord, the next day is brutal. Yep. Sometimes the next couple days. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the next couple days are a lot of like, okay, I know oh. I'm not sick, but I'm not feeling like getting up. I We have like some unspoken rules where it's like if we're – I'm not having Indian food on a weekday. <laughs> I got to go to work tomorrow and my commute has to be predictable. <laughs> With Indian food is for Fridays. Yeah. Saturday I can stay home and be on watch. Yeah. I can't have two drinks on a Monday night because yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday 
are going to yep. be problematic. I had Indian food Saturday night with my wife for our anniversary. Lovely. And it's good to have Sunday off. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, it's great, by the way. It's this place, uh, New Delhi, which I have to imagine is the name of a hundred Indian restaurants, but that was the name of this one. And, and the gentleman who runs it, owns it, cooks, Mater D's, it's that kind of restaurant. Right. And the portions are not very big and you're grateful because you, yep. you, you eat the food and it's, oh God, that's delicious. I wish there was more. And you think, oh, but if there was more, I'd eat it. Right. Then where would you be? Yeah. And now because there's not, I'll stop and I feel pretty good. I mean, it took us a long time to get to this. He's what, 25 or 26 in this song? Yeah. And he is uh, getting good at foresight. Although, as we go, I'm going to argue that maybe the character is supposed to be older than that. Maybe, yeah. Or yeah, something. In, anyway. Billy Joel has a quality in, in him and the, is that he was always kind of 50. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those dudes. You and I are like that too, by the way. You've always oh. been about at least 50 and so have I. I've always been a little bit of a grumpster and a little bit of not sure that anything's worth it. Yep. There's And that's just kind of a thing. Just staying alive, getting proven right. Yep. And, and we end up, and I think those guys, speaking of us, end up then being a little more um, charming older people because because we were like used to being grumpy. I fucking hope so. Oh, I think so, because a lot of the guys who had like everything going on, when they hit 50, they feel like somebody did something to them. That's true. And they get very bitter and cruel. Yeah, whereas I'm like, yeah. Hey, I'm I'm still kind of tired of it all. Right on. Yeah, I was kind of in a good mood because I got proven right. Yeah. I won. And now I'm just going to sit back and watch other people uh, crash their cars. Yeah, while we're not mad at young people, you and I aren't mad at young people because we're like, yeah, we were always pretty sure young people are idiots and they still are. That's great. Yep. Love some consistency in the world. <laughs> and in the morning, there'll be hell to pay somewhere along the line that's the only line i didn't read because it was a repeat of the previous now it's you that's more than fair <laughs> sweet virginia cigarette burning in my hand well you brought his cigarettes from home yeah well you used to be a friend of mine but now i understand you've been eating up inside me for some time oh and i know you're gonna get me <laughs> somewhere along the line Cancer. Cancer. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is 1973. Like, there wasn't a lot of talk about that. Yeah. It was like, well, I know they're not good for me, but. Mm. I uh, dated a girl one time uh, who I didn't know smoked. And uh, that's a very modern thing, by the way, to be somebody who smokes but doesn't let people know that. <laughs> yeah and then one time when we had had some drinks she was like you know it's just like cigarettes it's like a good friend she said oh no and i was like well, you know it's important to have friends i guess oh, and good. and and it was fine and then that night she just fucking smoked and i was like okay this is the moment when she's like uh i'm done pretending <laughs> I'm tired of pretending I'm listening to you, but really thinking about cigarettes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very, you you know, I don't know many people who smoke anymore. Yeah. But when you, you know people in their 20s who smoke, they're not really thinking about the health effects. Yeah. Especially if they're yeah. on vacation in France and they're like, eh. Yeah cigarettes but uh billy joel can't enjoy anything <laughs> yeah that's wonderful actually that is very billy joel's like there's you know i'm gonna have this wine not gonna be able to enjoy it <laughs> yeah and have this cigarette gonna kill me yeah oh i met a nice lady that's not gonna work out <laughs> <laughs> and look how happy he is now yeah he's I what that. 76 on his fourth wife true oh, and slim and looking reasonably content like in interviews now he's just 
there's a weird thing about Billy Joel, and I bet you it's when he talks about himself, you're like, man, it's almost like he's talking about a different dude. And that's probably how he thinks about it. I think like the bulk of his career was so long ago now. Yeah. It does feel like, oh, that, the character of Billy Joel. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I'm going to read the rest of this. This is a little bit of a bridge in here. Yeah. Which is a thing he used to do. Uh, well, I know you're going to get me somewhere along the line. Somewhere along the line. Well, I know it's just a matter of time. When the fun falls through, <laughs> the rent comes due. Somewhere along the line. That's a great line. The fun falls through. Yeah. Is that accurate? Or does he say, I always thought it was roof. But fun is great. Fun is great. And, and man, that is... That's a nice original line too. You know, our our friend Billy Joel loves his cliches. This ain't one of them. This is a real nice line. Yeah, although rent coming due. Is. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the idea of rent coming due, but just as a line itself, you know, it's not. Yeah. And and also, you know what he means. You're like, yeah, you spent so much money on food and wine and cigarettes and this trip. And yeah. you didn't have that money. Right. So now you are somewhere along the line. Yeah. Now you're scrounging the last bits. I think we've all been there, too, where we had a great weekend and we're like, okay, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be rough. I don't know if I have food. Yeah. Oh, I well. Friday. So I'm glad I work at a restaurant. <laughs> yep. Those days, <laughs> you're like, well, I won't starve. But I also won't have lights in the apartment, maybe. Yeah. I had, I'd lived in Koreatown in LA for a while and uh, my power got turned off. And so I ran one of those orange extension cords into the hallway <laughs> and I plugged it into a hallway socket and plugged all of my appliances into that for oh, like a month. <laughs> that's slick. <laughs> that was pretty great. And that's that great. I've got that and I've got food at, at work. Yeah. To worry about it is Tuesday when I don't have a shift. I worked at a restaurant once and they gave you food, but they had an employee menu, which is fine. At uh, least it's a menu, but it wasn't. So it was like on the main menu, there was all this chicken and all this stuff. And on the employee menu, there was grilled cheese, yeah. soup, and the salad. And I was like, all right. Yeah. And then there was once a month. There was the like fancy dinner that you could have, right? It's a little fancy employee dinner. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. But now that I, yeah, now that I know how food cost works, I'm like, you didn't have to do that. Food costs ain't that much, and your biggest loss isn't me; it's you ordering too many things. Right? Yeah, it's things going bad on you. Yeah, it ain't Jim having a piece of chicken. <laughs> Jim, if you'd seen Jim in his 20s, you knew he wasn't your problem. No. I mean, <laughs> you would know I was a problem, but you I had a problem. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> there were several. Yeah. And now I only have uh, like two. Oh, nice. They're good ones, though. <laughs> well, you know, I love my woman. And wow. I 1970s. And I would not let her down. And I did my share of loving when I used to get around. Now, and she is now I'm satisfied and she is looking fine. Oh, but you pay for your satisfaction somewhere along the line. But you pay for your satisfaction somewhere along the line. What the hell does this mean? <laughs> Means uh, it's not always going to be this good. Yeah, that's. That's funny because you had this one lyric where I kind of think it would be nice if this one was not a problem one, you know? <laughs> right. But but it's Billy Joel. He can't envision, at this point in his life for sure, can't envision it working out. <laughs> Amazing. And also, I love that... Uh... That line, I did my share of loving when I used to get around. <laughs> yeah. 26. 26, yeah. 
Like, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Did my share of loving. You were in high school eight years ago. Yeah. Hey, so question. Do you think Billy Joel got laid in high school? Do you think he lost his virginity in high school? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, that, so yeah, he probably did. He was right? a really good uh, piano player. True. And uh, a confident guy on Long Island. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah, he probably did all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I lost my virginity, I was surprised. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was, I was like, uh, terrified. Yeah. I wasn't terrified. I was just surprised it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so It is like a been in a car accident yeah what happened oh and it was perfectly fine you know as far as that goes it was there's was nothing bad about it but it won't, wasn't that good uh see i was still a practicing catholic uh so not bought condoms oh so i had a scary six weeks after my first time oh wow so you didn't have condoms and she went all right and she went, let's do it anyway. I was like, um, I don't know how to say no to things. <laughs> and then it was six weeks of worrying. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because your first time you're not really doing great with the pull-out method. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My first time was fine. Too. The girl was very nice. Well, that's good. Yeah, everything was fine. I I regretted aspects of it, but the regrets I I had were all performance related. That's where you want it. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. also. I wish I'd have done this thing better. I you was know. worried about having a child and going to hell. Ah, which is a lot to put on. Uh, the performance was the last thing on my mind. That's funny. Yeah, I've met a few religious folks who really had worries about hell and it's it's man catholic a lot of catholic sure i never i would you know i went to church and for whatever reason i don't think any of the churches i went to really emphasized hell so much that i worried about it yeah it was really central yeah <laughs> in my childhood and also very much reinforced when we got yeah. home i think i might have told you this but i'll say it again anyway but there, i knew this girl pretty religious and she liked pop music and she liked the song walk on the wild side ah yeah uh great song and uh but then she worried to the point of weeping and it's one of the things that i hate about religion that her just her liking and enjoying that song was putting her at risk of damnation yeah and early on that was one her experience turned me off on religion so much because like you know this song yeah, whatever it's a song but you should just be allowed to enjoy stuff and not be frightened as a child yeah yeah it's the free I the still, of children is a real yeah uh unforgivable sin yeah so if you like your christopher hitchens and i do sometimes although he could be a bit something but that's mm -hmm. one of the one of his main things is like the just the like indoctrination of kids through fear into your belief system. You know, he would never say it this way, but I'll say if your belief system could stand on its own, it should. Yeah. You don't need that fear nonsense. Amen. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. Somewhere along the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a little you know he was not christian but there's a little christianity vibe to this i this whole idea oh yeah you can't enjoy anything without paying for it later yeah you, you, the price is going to be paid one way or the other yeah all right i believe it's you my friend um i believe it's yes it is hey <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> it's good to be a young man and to live the way you please Yes, a young man is the king of every kingdom that he sees. Great. But there's an old and feeble man not far behind that surely will catch up to him somewhere along the line. 
It surely will catch up to him somewhere along the line. Chilling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And that's a funny thing. If you want to, that's so Billy Joel to like <laughs> be young and going, oh, yeah, but I'm going to get old, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how Jewish that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. God. It's so funny, too, because then at that point, is there anything you're allowed to just enjoy? Not without considering the other side of it. Yeah. You have to like it. it and, you know, with the drumming into your head, it you do it yourself like no one has to stand there and go hey you got to get old though because you do both sides of the conversation yourself yeah and that's the dream that's what they want <laughs> that's such a funny thing too just like you're because i didn't do that in my 20s you know i had my anger issues and i had my take too many risks moments and whatever take not enough risks i had that but i didn't have the thing like well i'm young now I'll be old later <laughs> Such a silly thing. <laughs> Actually, I, and I had the opposite anyway. I had the man, but I'm now it's frustrating, but man, I can't wait to be old. And I was, again, I'll say it again. I was right. I was right. I enjoy being old. I'm, if I can be old and somewhat healthy. Yeah. Sign me up. Now, I will say I would freeze it here if I could. This is ideal. If I had a choice, to start and end at the same spot, it would be roughly in my 50s, roughly mm -hmm. here. I find I'm better at I'm better at listening to people. I really yeah. like that. I like that aspect of it. Still not great, but I'm better. <laughs> and, I, and I'm better at appreciating what it is I like about myself, which I wish I had that when I was younger. There are things about myself that I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. And I wish I was better at that. I feel like I've gotten better at being satisfied with like a nice day. Yeah. Oh, we're going to, you know, Sue and I will go walk in the park and look at birds. And I'm like, yeah, that's a full day. Yeah. That's very nice. I don't need to be like at a club with loud music and be on drugs to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is nice. No one's hitting me. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. When Mary Jo and I were uh, on our little anniversary and we were at the club and other people were singing. So my wife, of course, sang the way you'd hope somebody would sing well. And there was a dude afterwards who did a song from Hamilton. <laughs> and uh, he sang uh, he sang one more time, which if you don't remember what the song is, one more time is about George Washington deciding to not run for president and to let it go. Yeah. And so it's between him and Hamilton and Alexander Hamilton was trying to understand why he would give up the presidency. And, you know, it's, he says, because then we teach the world, they, we're going to teach him how to say goodbye as the line is beautiful song. This guy, for some reason, did all the talking parts. Oh, no, no. He did all the singing parts and not good, not particularly good. Oh, that's a bummer. And it was absurd. And in the past, when I was younger, I think I would have been mad uh -huh. that this guy had done this. And, I, and when I think about it, I'm like, ah, oh, it's too bad when I was younger. I didn't appreciate how lovely this absurdity is. <laughs> yeah and that i could recognize oh this is just a guy who wants to sing yeah so loves that song he likes that song and you've done lots of things you shouldn't do and just enjoy what this is yeah and so there was a part where i was just like at some point i heard myself go yeah <laughs> like <laughs> encouraging him and he had a good time and I wasn't even being sarcastic. Yeah. I was right. like, right on, man. <laughs> like, yeah, you had a good time. You did your song. And I was looking oh, at the audience. Why do I need more than that? Yeah. And I looked at the audience and I realized 
they were all having a good time because there was a man or a lady who brought them alcohol. There was food to be eaten. Yeah, everyone's safe. I don't even think he thinks he's good. I don't even think he's deluded. I <laughs> think he just thinks, I want to do this. Great. All yep. you need. And as a young man, I would have just been like, ah, why is he not the greatest singer in the world? Right. Or I'll make fun of him for a week with my friends. Yep. <laughs> eh, let the man have a nice, I just want to feed my birds. Yep. Let him have a nice, yeah. yeah. And then later on, another person sang a song from Hamilton. <laughs> and they, they had a great voice. See? And they understood the context of the song and they sang only one part. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So maybe he even learned. Yep. And they, they sang the uh, King George song, which is a great song, of course. Oh, the best. Yeah. That, thanks for reminding me of that. So I'm going to listen to that after we're done because it's so great. Oh, yeah. It's such a fun song. And the, the live, you know, the video, the, the recording where you just get to see the close up of his spit. <laughs> the best man how much covid would you have gotten at that show oh my god everyone would have got covid from him <laughs> just from him <laughs> so great oh great fucking right in character too yeah uh in interviews he's talked about that because people ask him about that it's just very funny because it's just like yeah that's just always been how i sing as he sings so fully. It's funny, too, to be only in two songs or three. Three, but I'm not sure. And to have gotten so much notice just for, that's, man, that's a performance. And it's a dream Hollywood, or Hollywood, dream Broadway turn. Yeah. He's on stage for like a total of 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And everybody loves me the most. Yeah. It, yeah. And he has, there's a lot of funny things in that, in Hamilton, but that's the thing that just gives you a break from the tone of everything else. Yeah. Musically as well. Yes. Which is brilliant. It's really brilliant. That's because it's the one song that you would say is truly musical theater style. That's old fashioned musical theater, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's an old fashioned uh, love song. I think it's fine. It's it's about time somebody said something good about that play. I wonder if we should do a Hamilton podcast. I bet yeah. no one on that. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there is uh, a, a great one called "The Room Where It Happens." Oh yes, what a great! Oh that that number. <laughs> Paul Goebel, speaking of people who get mad at stuff that you shouldn't get mad at when he was younger, oh. and now, and now. Um, but. One, I remember one time he just went off on people, and I don't think he normally held this opinion, but he just went off on people who say, talk about how good the Beatles are. And, he's, and he got mad for some reason. He's like, of course they're great. You don't need to say that anymore. <laughs> oh, he, he was older than us, even yeah. when we were old. Yeah, he was older than Mel Brooks most of the time, man. <laughs> yeah, good old grumpy man. And my, he was like, I called him the other day just because he's one of my best friends. And he was like, can we just text him? I don't really have the energy for this right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the, the honesty of it was quite lovely. And, you know, I'm just happy he's doing well with his awesome wife and cats. And <laughs> God bless him. You yeah. never have to wonder uh, if he was uh, being truthful with you. Yeah, that's true. Like, that oh, true. Man, I'll bet he really feels the way he's saying he feels. Yeah. <laughs> One of my funny yeah. memories I have of him, it was back in Fancy Ketchup, and Fancy Ketchup was a sketch group of alcoholics. Yeah. And uh, one time he had said something that pissed off Tim because Tim felt underappreciated. And I was like, you, you know, you, and Tim probably was underappreciated. We probably all were. And we were probably all overappreciated as well. You know, this is that kind of group. But uh -huh. Paul goes, I, I don't feel like I need to compliment you all the time. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like I always need to tell Frank Sinatra what a good job he's doing. And Tim goes, Did you just compare me to Frank Sinatra? Well, 
okay, you never need to compliment me again. <laughs> uh, great. It was really funny how a, one of the few times a dumb fancy catch fight turned into a lovely conversation. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a nice memory. That resolved nicely. Yeah, nobody hit anybody. It was great. And then you broke up. <laughs> yep. Perfect. All, like I've said many times, any comedy group I've been in has never broken up. It has just slowly wound to a stop. <laughs> there was never a big moment when we're like, that's it. It was just the moment where I was like, hey, do you guys want to rehearse Saturday? And I was like, Saturday's not good for me. I was like, okay, well, we'll see next week. And then months later, you're like, oh, I, I guess we're done. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. It's nature's way. Yep, it's nature's way. This is what I picked for next week. Uh, so I have moved. I've left Los Angeles. Of course, I am in the Bay Area now, oh. although I will be visiting uh, L.A. pretty soon. So Los Angelinos. Oh, great. Los, lovely lyrics, by the way. Lovely lyrics. Weird, cool music. Yeah. And uh, a, a cool a cool song about a very specific time in Billy Joel's career yeah. as a musician. Yeah, nice window. Yeah. So um, I think it, it fits our latest thing, which is songs a lot of people don't know about that are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, which was the point I was making about the Beatles. There aren't a lot of Beatles deep cuts, but I think there are Billy Joel deep cuts. There's, there's definitely songs ain't nobody heard of unless you're a real fan. There's been at least a couple of songs that you have brought up that I didn't know about. Yeah. So... Christmas in Fallujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say a hidden gem, but it was definitely hidden. Yeah. And it's definitely by Billy Joel, unlike the other song I brought up, which wasn't. Ah, <laughs> uh, you do your best. Yeah. Los Angelinos, though. It's a it's a good song. And that, you yeah. know. And I do feel like he's doing an impression of a band with that yeah. one. Yeah, agreed. Look forward to that. And we will, yeah. Now uh, I have a, I'm standing in front of. Uh-huh, Zanzibar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great job. We did. Wow. Tell Thank everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ben, I don't think this has ever happened. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell yeah. everybody why. Because that is very clearly a shanty town. Yeah. And uh, that's the kind of word that if it pops up in lyrics, you don't forget it. That's, that's fantastic. Now tell everybody what a shanty town really is. It's um, a town where uh, poor people live. Yeah. And it's of makeshift homes. And I want to say it's depression yeah. era is where yeah. the term comes from. Like a Hooverville. Yeah. And that is indeed a shanty town. That's funny too. Cause when I will look, that's great. Cause when I, sometimes I'll look up, look for a picture of something and then I'll have to get a picture that approximates it. Right. You nailed it. You were head on this time. Yeah, because it was super, ah, that was very enjoyable. <laughs> Paid off nicely. Yeah. All right. I got a trivia question for you. Bust. Uh, Billy Joel's had some number one songs. Yes. For sure. Yes. Which one? Oh, it wasn't. That wasn't a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Shantytown. Yes. We're done. Um. Which one of his number one songs stayed at number one for the longest period of time? And for bonus points, how long? Oh, okay. <sighs> here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Still rock and roll to me. No. Okay, I don't even know if that was number one, but it should have been. Should have okay. been. All right. I th okay, hold on, hold on. Wait. Okay. Um, we didn't start the fire. No, it wasn't number one. Yeah. Not very long, though. I did that. Uh, I said that the, a weird way. And now I want to say that I said we didn't start the fire. That's weird. Okay. It wasn't we didn't start the fire. Um, okay. Uh, tell her about it. No. That was three guesses, so you're out. I think I'm out, yeah. River of Dreams was number one for 12 weeks. 
dude. That's so funny. Can you even imagine that song making the charts in the year of our Lord, 2022? Yeah, that's yes. But recorded by someone else, like recorded by some very soulful person. Um, Sure. You know, or uh, Ed Sheeran records it (laughs) and he does really well with it. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, what I feel like almost River of Dreams being the longest number one is on the charts for Billy Joel is a direct affront to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to take it personally. Because <laughs> a uh, bit of trivia for those of longtime listeners will know. Yes, I don't like that song or that album or that album or the I, album art. Yeah. You don't even like the album art. Oh, 0 for 3. Yeah. That album art is very uh, Prince, but not well done. It's like the kind of album art Prince would do during yeah. his spiritual, you know, jag. You, where You know who did that album art? No. Uh, Christy Brinkley. Really? Yeah. And that's why they got divorced. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I so I don't mind River of Dreams. I think, would you like that song better if you just got rid of some of the melodrama at the beginning? Would you then, would it be easier for you to listen to that song and go, oh, this is fine? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to decide what the origin of my dislike is. Yeah. I, I waited so long for another Billy Joel album. And then that song came out and it doesn't say anything really. It's very atypical stylistically. Yeah. I was like, oh, this ain't Billy Joel. Yeah. Now we talked about the lyrics once. I'll say the only thing I thought that was kind of cool was that it's a song that's ostensibly a spiritual, but in the lyrics, he more or less says, I don't really believe in God. And I like that lyrically. I like that. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the real Billy Joel peeked in for a second. Yeah. But even in a spiritual, he's like, "Mm, that ain't probably true. It ain't for me, but I'll sing it. I can't enjoy nothing. (laughs) (laughs) That is the Billy Joel mantra of most of his music because I cannot enjoy anything for very long. So we should say to anybody listening to this, we hope you're not enjoying it. In the spirit. So, Bruno Mars, we hope you are not having a good time. Hope you're very sad, Bruno Mars. <laughs> did you pick a song for next? Oh, no, I did. I did. You did. Did you pick a new medication for your uh, mental health problem? <laughs> Probably did, but I didn't take it. <laughs> yeah. Go check. I've refused to take it and I've wandered off. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature's way. <sighs> Oh man, I do really like this background. I'll probably just keep it for a while. Great. I think about all the people in this place back here who are sad. Yeah, they made it out. Yeah. I, some of them did, but most of them didn't. Yeah. It flooded at some point, I'm sure. Sure. Lots of fights and unwanted pregnancies back there. Somebody had a neighbor they did not care for. Probably almost everybody. Yeah. And there was probably somebody in there who lived there who was too chipper and it made people mad. <laughs> oh, that's a great character. <laughs> the the gut- hole in Shantytown. Oh, <laughs> oh, you can write a whole screenplay about that. That's just such a funny, that's a Coen Brothers movie. It really is. There's this <laughs> dingus in there. It's just like, everybody's just suffering. It's like, ah, hello, neighbor. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> How's the roof? Uh, We're trying to figure out what we can eat. Me too. You know what? Something will happen. I can't write that guy. This catchphrase. Something will happen. Something will happen. <laughs> Pitch it. And then there is a flood, and you and there's a flood, and it's brutal, and you just see him floating on a piece of wood <laughs> with a big old fish. Yeah. <laughs> That settles that. See, I told you something would happen. 
<laughs> hey, I'm really glad this cleared up too. That thing finally cleared oh, up. Oh yeah, great. You know, if you missed the last couple of episodes, a feature is uh, Jim has an open something on a stupid forehead. <laughs> it was credited. For a yeah, while. that's right. That, by the way, is how bad the rest of my appearance was COVID wise. That wasn't even worth mentioning. Nobody pointed out the hole in your head? No, because they were like, look, fine. That's his best feature this week. <laughs> At least he's leading with it. <laughs> oh, boy. I look great right now, though, because I got this sweet little just like charming. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. The dingus of Shantytown. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call that one. That's the, that's the name of our screenplay, the Dingus. Oh, that's great, the Dingus of Shantytown. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> Something will happen. Oh my goodness! So that was. Well, let me write this down. What was that? Was that episode fifty four? Fifty four. Oh man, or is that episode fifty three? Yeah, uh, you said fifty four. Okay, I think it's fifty four. Yeah, you got your word. Oh no, it is episode fifty four. I wrote that down. Next week is Los Angelinos. Alex on fire with the background. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, we nailed it. That's why this episode wasn't three hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job, everybody. Good job, team. <laughs>